The most prevalent data is cell phone stuff that pretty much goes across all, all vehicles. You sync up your phone and, and you, you got to think about what's, what you're doing inside the vehicle and that helps you understand what's going on. If you plug in your phone, you allow it to download your contact list in order to do a speed dial. Well, now you realize that you, you push that information and that information is now being stored on your car. The other, what I think is the more exciting or, or more applicable GPS data is what they call track logs, which is on such and such a date, you were here, and then you were here, and then you were here, and it's just a little breadcrumb trail of about, you know, a data sample about one per second. What's unique about this technology compared to some of the previous EDR stuff, which is more plug and play, you put a cable into the vehicle and the data spits out, this is real labor intensive. You actually have to take the circuit board out of the vehicle. You've got to connect wires in certain companion boards and you got to get them to line up just right and it's, it's actually quite a labor intensive technology and technique. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out so once you finally get the data and you get a good communication it's a tremendous relief. Looking back at the research we performed, there's still just as many questions as there are coming into the research. They're, they're just deeper questions. For instance, I don't fully understand just yet the data arbitration. Why is it that several of our test runs that we performed, we weren't able to recover data? Conversely, why is it that when we were doing some of the gear shift testing, we were able to recover a lot of track log data? So the fact that we're getting data in instances where we didn't necessarily expect it and we didn't get driving data where we expected to get data is still some research that we need to continue to conduct.